Hello guys, in this video I will show you what I've made. I've made a phylogenetic tree for OCA2 and HERC2 icolor genotypes. Um, OCA2 and HERC2 is not the only gene, it is not the only region that contributes to icolor, but it is the most major contributor to icolor. Uh, let me show you what I've made. Right, so here I show the actual tree, the phylogenetic tree that, of these mutations. Uh, on the very left, you see ancestral OCA2 and HERC2. This is what the sub-Saharan Africans have. This is before any of the Eurasian mutations that we've had for this uh, gene that lightens eyes. And the very first mutation, the deviation you can see is the BEH1. Uh, this is a mutation. Uh, I showed the RS. You can check it with your um, file. All of these should be present in your file if you took a MyHeritage or 23andMe or Ancestry. Uh, if you're curi curious what you have for these um, variations, you can look it up in your file. So BH1, uh, it is within the OCA2 gene, and it is present in nearly all Europeans. So, but when I say it's present in all Europeans, but nearly all Europeans have the BH1 proper, uh, uh, proper um, genus set, right? They have two Ts within this variation. Pretty much all Europeans. Um, and North Europeans, pretty much all North Europeans, but also some East Asians and Amerindians. It is also present in East Asia, in South Asia, in uh, American Indians. And it leads to kind of a brown, not a dark brown like Sub-Saharan Africans, but a brown, a sort of slightly depigmented eye color. Uh, another mutation that happened before BEH2 is BEH4. And it leads to sort of a hazel, a kind of a greenish hazel eye color. Uh, it is within this variation. So if you have if you have one T or two Ts in this variation, you have the BEH4 mutation. What's interesting about the BEH4 mutation is that although it leads to a lighter hair, uh, eye color and hair color and skin color and everything else, uh, although it leads to a lighter coloring, it actually if you have the mutation in BEH4, that means you cannot have the mutation in BEH2. And if you're a European, that means if you don't have the mutation in BH2, that means you're kind of you're going to be darker. So for Europeans, uh, BH4 does not make their eyes lighter because it comes, uh, it always comes with not having the BH2 mutation. Because as you can see in the tree, this mutation happened before the BH2 mutation, which is present in all Europeans, more so in the South and some West Asians and North Africans. And the BH2 mutation, uh, let me show you the SNP. It is RS129, 132. If you have G, GG or AG, you have the BH2 mutation. And this is the mutation that 23andMe uh, looks for to determine eye color. Uh, now, if you have the BH2, if you have the BH4 mutation, that means you cannot have, at least you cannot have two copies of the BH2 mutation, right? Uh, you, you have either one copy of the BH2 or you have none, no copies. So that's why the BEH4 is associated with a lower chance of blue eyes and gray eyes in Northern Europeans and Europeans in general. However, in Africans, in North Africa, in Asia, everywhere that is, that is not Europe, you will see a pattern that uh, the T allele in RS1800407 leads to a lighter eye color. And the T allele here does lighten the eye color. It, it, it leads to a lighter eye color. Uh, later happened the BH2 mutation. So if you have, and it, it goes the other way as well, if you have uh, GG in RS129138.32, if you have GG here, you cannot have any Ts within the BH4. It's just impossible. It is possible if you have a dislinkage event. If a dislinkage event occurred uh, where your gene was split, it's possible that you can have it, but it's pretty rare. And there's only been a couple of times within my study that I've found such events. Uh, the BH2 mutation, uh, it, it leads to a sort of a greenish, um, and this is just a general rule. I'm not, I'm not saying if you have the BH2 mutation, you're going to have this kind of an eye color. It's just a general rule. It is also my eye color. And lastly, we have the BH3 mutation, which happened in this population. It happened after BH2. It happened on the, on the branch of BH2. So once again, if you have... If you have the BEH2 mutation, that does not mean you have BEH3, right? You can have BEH2 without having BEH3. However, if you have BEH3, that means you got to have BEH2. 
And BH3 is present in most Europeans, more so in the north, and it tends to lead to a blue, uh, kind of a blue gray eye color. And the SNP is RS11636232. Um, this SNP is within the HERC2 gene. BH2 SNP is also within the HERC2 gene. BH4 and BH1 are both within OCA2 gene. Here is a statistic for BH1. Um, this is a statistic from a study I've made. By the way, all these people satisfy the requirements for BH1 exactly. So they have uh, they have two alleles, they have two, two Ts here in BH1, and they don't have any of the other mutations. So these people have brown and majority brown and minority dark brown eyes. These people fit the requirements for BH1 perfectly. They are uh, full identical, not half like most folks. By the way, if if I wanted to, I could not even use myself or my sister or my brother for this um, uh, for this chart because we don't satisfy the requirements for BH1, BH2, BH3, BH4. We don't satisfy any of these requirements because we are kind of like half between BH3 and BH2 because I, we have the full, we have the BH2, we have uh, GG in this SNP in RS129138342 but we don't have TT in the BH3 SNP, we have CT. So we don't actually satisfy the requirement. Uh, we can't even, I can't even use myself or uh, my relatives as a reference point for these genosets, but these people do satisfy the requirements. So when these people satisfy the requirements for this genoset, you see that they have brown and dark brown eyes. This is BH1, uh, the one on the very right. Next is the BH2 statistic. Uh, this is once again pure full match bh2 no bh3 um nothing else just bh2 so b just bh2 means bh2 plus bh1 because bh2 comes from the bh1 it, it, it's it's a mutation that happens later after bh1 um so the statistic here is very interesting it's mostly blue eyes but there is quite a couple of green and hazel and blue amber center in fact there's probably more non-blue eyes than blue eyes here um, yeah, here is the BH3 statistic. Uh, this includes once again, people, uh, pure full matches for BH3 and being a pure, uh, full match for BH3, it means you have TT in the BH3 mutation, you have GG in the BH2 mutation, and you have TT in the BH1 mutation. That's what it means. You got all three of them. So these are the people who got all three of them exactly, nothing, not half entirely, uh, fully satisfy the requirements. Um, they mostly have blue eyes, but there is some green, uh, there's some hazel, there's some blue amber center. Um, this results in, uh, the, the reason for these green and hazel and blue amber center, it's other genes besides OCA2 and HERC2. There's other genes that play a role in eye color. Uh, there's TIRP, TIRP1, IRF4, uh, there's um, TIR, there's SLC24A4, SLC45A2. There's a couple of genes that play a role besides OCA2 and HERC2. So that explains the variation between uh, between all these people because hazel and blue, obviously their genetics are quite different. Uh, hazel eyes are visually very different from blue. Here's the BEH4 statistic. And the BEH4 statistic was very difficult for me to get. Um, so there's only two people that fully satisfy BEH4, uh, which means they have two T alleles at this SNP. It's a very rare mutation, actually. Uh, and these two people, one of them has blue eyes, the other one has hazel eyes. It's a very rare mutation. It only occurs in the Middle East, in um, North Africa, in maybe Spain. It doesn't, you're, not, you're never going to find a Finnish person with this mutation. Uh, let me tell you that. But... It's super rare, and then even in my in my study, I haven't found many people who have who satisfied. I only found two people. There's a couple people that satisfied sort of halfway. So uh, satisfying it halfway would mean they have the BH1 fully, and they have only one T for the BH4. So they have RS1800407. They have CT here. Uh, that would be satisfying it halfway. But I don't really I don't really care for halfway. I don't want to include that in my statistic. Um, so when could these mutations have occurred and who has them? Very interesting question. BH1 mutation must have occurred roughly around the time humans left Africa. All Eurasian populations have significant frequencies of the derived allele. So BH1 would be this one. Uh, it doesn't look like it's very light, you know, brown, 
brown eyes, dark brown eyes. It's not very light. That's not a light eye color, but it is lighter than black what and what uh, Sub-Saharan Africans have. It is lighter. It is slightly lighter. Um, BH2 mutation must have occurred in the Upper Paleolithic, probably in Southern Europe, could be around the Black Sea region, as uh, some uh, science folks like to claim. I don't know if it was in the Black Sea region. It could, it could have been anywhere. It could have been the Gravetians. It could have been something that's related to Cro-Magnons. Uh, this mutation was present in both European and Anatolian hunter-gatherers. So uh, it was present in Anatolian farmers later. It was present in a lot of people uh, in Europe and the Western Asia. So the BH2 mutation is this. Uh, that's the BH2 mutation. You can see it on the phylogenic tree. It happened here after BH1, but before BH3. Um, BH3. BH3 had to have occurred uh, very recently, perhaps as recently as Copper Age. The derived allele in this variation seems to be almost exclusive to Northern and Central Europe. The reason I say it uh, must have occurred pretty recently is because when you look at the frequency for it, you see Finland has like a huge frequency. Scandinavia has a huge frequency. Um, British Isles, huge frequency. But then you look at like Southern Europe, and there, the frequency is very little, very tiny. If it was some um, ancient ancestral uh, mutation like BEH2 that happened in the Paleolithic, it would be present everywhere. It would be present in Southern Europe. It would be present in Northern Europe. We would not see such a big dis disparity uh, between the two mutations. Also, what's interesting is BEH3 is absent from Western Asia. It's only present in some, um, in some groups in Pakistan, uh, Afghanistan, Tajikistan, who come from Indo-Europeans. So it must have been brought there by the Indo-Europeans. That's why I'd say it was probably a mutation that arose in the Copper Age. It's, it's probably pretty recent. Uh, the BH3 is, to remind you, this, this mutation. Uh, on the phylogenic tree, you can see it happens after BH2. So if you have BH3, that means you satisfy BH2 and BH1. You got to have both of these to, ha to have BH3. It is the most progressive of the mutations. And finally, BH4 could not have occurred recently. It was present in Paleolithic populations. So if you look at Paleolithic Moroccans like Taf Tafarout, am I pronouncing it right? Tafarout, Tafalart, I don't know. Um, it was present in Anatolian farmers once again. It was present in these Mediterranean populations. But I think it was even present in um, Western hunter-gatherers. I've seen some Western hunter-gatherer genomes with this. Uh, for some reason, though, this mutation never took off in Northern Europe, and it pretty much remained in the Mediterranean area. So this BH4 mutation, um, it's not a Northern European mutation. You will not find... Finnish people who have this. You will not find Russians who have this. It's a very Southern European or Mediterranean mutation that leads to lighter eye color. So if you like this video, uh, like it, subscribe, and um, stick around for more.